The kingdom of God does not benefit you physically until you have discovered it spiritually. In fact, your level of discovery in the spirit determines your fruit in the physical. So Jesus says that the first mystery that people didn't understand was the mystery of the coming kingdom. They kept waiting for a kingdom that had already come. When Jesus came, he's saying the time is fulfilled. Come on now. And the kingdom of God is at hand. So repent and believe the gospel. Glory to God. Thank you so much, Pastor. Pastor Ben is a brother. He's a fellow servant in the kingdom of God. And I'm telling you, we, I remember the time we were together in, I, I believe it was Zimbabwe. And uh, the Lord just used us greatly in that place. Thank you for this opportunity uh, to be of ministry to the body of Christ. And I pray that even through these few minutes we have, God will be able to bless somebody. Thank you again, the Diaspora Hope Radio. I pray grace over your airwaves that they will go far and wide and reach as many people globally as possible and bring ministry into the hearts and in the minds of people. Thank you for this platform. And yes, uh, my assignment is simple, to speak about the establishment and the propagation of the kingdom of God across the world. We believe that that's the season we are living in. This is, in fact, the season of the kingdom of God. And everything that we are seeing is, in fact, playing into the timeline of the kingdom of God. So thank you. And let's pray even as we go on today to share grace together. Thank you again, Pastor Ben and the entire team that is putting this together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you. We thank you. We bless you. We have no God like Jehovah. You are Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end. You are everything that we will ever desire in life. And today as your word of the kingdom goes forward, bless us, enlighten, reveal, O oh God, minister to every man and woman that is watching this live or will watch it even after this session. And let your ministry bring about a revival in our hearts and cause us to draw closer and closer to your purposes. These things we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Now, today, I want to take just a few minutes, 30 or so minutes, to share on uh, kingdom-mindedness, but I will focus on how kingdom-mindedness can help us gain hope in a fallen world. I believe we are really living in a very cataclysmic moment. It's a kind of time where the world is being shaken, circumstances are being shaken, families are being shaken, churches and ministries, especially because of the season we are in. When we talk about the pandemic, when we talk about the seasons that men are seeing today, we do understand that most of the people's faith today is actually being put to the test. Now, I believe that in the same season of the test, in the same season when, you know, everything that can be shaken is being shaken, hope begins to arise for men and women who are firmly established in their faith. And that's what I want to talk about today. I will use for my basis of scripture, Colossians chapter number one, Colossians chapter number one, and I will read uh, from verse number 27. Colossians chapter number one, from verse number 27. This is a common scripture, but let's bring some more light to it. In Colossians 1, 27, this is Paul, of course, speaking to the church of Colossus. And in 27, it says, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
If I'm to backtrack a bit in verse number 26, he begins by telling us why he's being called into ministry. He says, Whereover I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. And then in 27 he says, To whom God would also make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The hope we have in a day like this is Christ in us. I'll say that again. Our hope in this day is Christ in us that becomes the hope of glory. But that already classifies something here, that it is not just Christ received, it becomes Christ revealed. Because the Christ received is simply by faith. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 8, by grace we are saved through faith, and it is a gift of God. Christ in us received is what we call salvation. But Christ in us revealed is now pointing to the mystery of the kingdom of God, the coming kingdom of God. Now, this scripture makes it a bit clear that the hope for the world today is Christ. I'll say that again. The hope for the world today is Christ. In fact, every time we see calamity, every time we see this kind of situations we are seeing today, it's because God wants to point men to the real answer, and the answer can only be Jesus Christ. However, my job today is to try and just go a bit deeper to the understanding of Christ in us as the hope of glory. And there's one question that you must ask yourself. If Christ is the answer for today, what is the source of hope in the Christ that I have received today? What is the source of hope in the Christ that I have received today? There are two things that I will pick up. But first, I will take you to Hebrews chapter number 12 so that we get a better balance of what we are talking about today. Christ in us, the hope of glory. I pray for everyone that is plugging in today. May there be a new hope that begins to rise in your spirit, regardless of the circumstances you may find yourself in, whether it's family or marriage or, or church or school. Whatever it is, there is a hope, and his name is Christ. But we will get to understand that even better. Now, Christ in us, the hope of glory, can be understood in two ways. The first way is that Christ in us received is what we call salvation. But Christ in us revealed is the purposes of that salvation. Let me say that again. Christ in us revealed, sorry, Christ in us received is the ministry of salvation. But Christ in us revealed is the purposes for which we have received Christ. So if we compare Colossians 1 and 27 with Hebrews 12, and Hebrews 12 will help us understand what's happening in the world today. Now, Hebrews 12, in verse number 25, if we'll start there, he says that, See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. Okay. So, usually, the situation is not the problem. The voices you're listening to in the situation are the problem. It is not where you are that is the problem. It's what you're hearing while you are where you are that becomes the issue. So he's saying in this day, refuse not him that speaketh, because he's speaking in this season, and I'll tell you what he is saying. He continues to say, Hebrews 12, 25, For if they escaped not, talking about the children of Israel, if they escaped not who refused him that spake on the earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaks from the heavens. Okay, so in this season it's critical that you get a word from the heavens. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. The word from the heavens. Verse 26, Hebrews 12. Whose voice, now talking about the God of the Old Testament, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised, saying, once more I will shake, not the earth only, but also the heaven. Verse 27. And this word, yet once more, signifies, 
you have to pay attention to this one. The removing of those things that are shaken. You may need to underline that in your Bible. He says, yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaken as of the things that are made so that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. So yes, there is a shaking today. Yes, there is calamity. There is a pandemic. There's everything that is happening. But listen, he says that when he speaks, there is a shaking. So that the things that can be shaken will be shaken. However, the things that cannot be shaken will remain. And of course, we know that the thing that remains is really faith and hope. It is hope that remains after the shaking. In fact, a man that has hope does not die when the shaking is happening. A man that has hope has been given the ability to believe for a better end, even in the midst of a shaking. We will go there in a minute. Then he defines to us the things that remain. What are these things that remain that are being built by hope? Get this one. Verse 28. So therefore, Hebrews 12, 28. Wherefore, we receiving... Watch this now. A kingdom which cannot be moved. Hallelujah, somebody. We receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God, verse 29, is a consuming fire. So while there is a shaking, there is also a receiving. Watch what's happening now. That when the shaking begins to happen on the universe, while men are wasting away, while men whose houses have been built on sand are falling apart, when those things that can't be shaken are being shaken, there is yet a remnant of people who in the same season are receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved. So the thing that remains is in fact the kingdom of God that cannot be shaken. So our hope now is in the kingdom that we receive that cannot be shaken. I need to say that again. Our hope is in the kingdom we receive that cannot be shaken. I'll say it the third time. Our hope is in the kingdom of God that is received that cannot be shaken. So to take you back to Colossians 1.27, because I want to put these two things uh, in perspective so you understand where we're going tonight. If we are to put these two things in perspective, it means that Christ in me, the hope of glory, means two things. Number one, it means Christ received, which is the gift of salvation. And then it talks about Christ revealed, which is the manifestation of the kingdom. Let me say that again. Christ in me received is pointing us to salvation. And number two, Christ in me revealed is talking about the manifestation of the kingdom. So in the day of great shaking, the first escape route is called salvation. This is where only men that find Christ will find safety. Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are saved. Jesus himself said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except he come by me. So Jesus presents us the first understanding of Christ in me, the hope of glory. John chapter 10, he says, I'm the door. Any man that enters by me, he will come in and he will go out and he will find pasture. So Christ is the answer in terms of salvation. However, in the day that we are living in, even the saved will be troubled. Even those that have received Jesus will be challenged. Even the Christian will question their faith because this is a great shaking. And just because I'm saved, watch this now, it will save me eternally, but it will not pull me out of the troubles of the earth. So I must understand another way to be saved from the troubles of the earth more than just the fact that I am saved. John 16, 33, the Bible says, in this world, there will be many trials and temptation. And then he says, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. That is already talking about cosmos, which is the thought pattern, the systems of the world. Now, you must understand that your first security is in salvation. But that's not what I want to focus on. I want to focus on your second security. That in the day we are living in, 
you have to connect to the victory over the world, the victory over the systems, the victory over cosmos, the victory over the plans of the world. I was told that even this pandemic might have been just manufactured in a laboratory. You know, the world is evil and the world is fallen. But you see, our security starts at salvation but does not end there. We have what we call the hope of salvation, but we are about to see that the hope of salvation leads you to the hope of his calling. So the hope of glory is in fact a combination of the hope of salvation and the hope of his calling. The hope of his calling, of course, will point us to the manifestation of the things of the kingdom of God. So, as we ask ourselves this question, these are the two things we recognize. We recognize that every time we sing a song saying Jesus is our hope and Jesus is the hope of glory, the question we ask ourselves is what does Jesus bring that gives us hope? I'll ask that again. What does Jesus bring that brings us hope? And in understanding scripture, you will see that he brings us two things. He brings us salvation and he brings us kingdom. So let's run now. Matthew chapter number six. Let us understand that the same Jesus that brought salvation also brought the kingdom. When he looked at the troubles of the earth, he understood that the earth was dealing with two problems. It was dealing with a sin problem, but it was also dealing with a kingdom problem. The enemy always attacks in these two areas. The area of salvation or, you know, the area of sin and then the area of the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, he begins, and this is a whole long one, but let me see where to pick it up. In verse number, uh, you know, he, where shall we go? 27. He says, which of you by taking thought? Uh, no, let's, let's go back. I believe we have a minute or two. 25. He says, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, or for your body, what shall you put on? Is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment? 26, Before, behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much more than these fowls? 27, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? 28, and why take ye thought of raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not. Neither do they spin, 29. And yet I say unto you, not even Solomon in all of his glory, please don't miss this word, all of his glory, because I'm about to tell you what the hope of glory is. And even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like any one of these. 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye? O ye of little faith. So the problem here is faith, which we can understand as hope made a reality. Yes, faith is hope made a reality. O you of hope that has not yet been made a reality. So look at this, 31. Therefore, do not take thought saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or with what shall we be clothed? 32, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all things. And then he makes the big point, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. Understand that at this point, he doesn't even say seek Jesus. At this point, he says seek the kingdom. When Jesus himself came, he in fact didn't tell people seek Jesus. When Jesus came, he said, I came to seek and save those that are lost. Why? Because being lost is not being lost from a person. They were lost from a place. But they had to receive a person to lead them to a place. When you're lost, it has something to do with a place more than it has to do with a person. So salvation now becomes the door to the place that we had lost called the kingdom of God. So he says the first thing you must seek is seek the kingdom of God. Well, we have an example in John chapter number 3 of a man called Nicodemus who came to seek first the kingdom of God. In Nicodemus, in, hey, I said Nicodemus, in John chapter number 3, praise the Lord. And in verse number 3, the, in verse number 1, it talks about how Nicodemus now comes to seek first the kingdom. 
And the Bible says, he said, Rabbi, verse 2, I know that you a teacher come from God, for no man does these miracles save if God be with him. Verse 3, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, salvation, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Christ in me, the hope of glory, means hope comes from two places. Hope comes from receiving Christ, salvation, but then hope is acclimatized. Are you there? Hope gets to the place of restitution. Hope, hope uh, let me put this better. Hope gets its meaning when a man who was waiting is now put on duty. God help the church here today. And this only happens in the place of the kingdom of God. So, just to drive this even further, what do we understand as the kingdom being the hope of the nations? Well, when Jesus saw the earth in its trouble, rather than just be satisfied that he has paid the price for sin, this was his declaration. He said, and that is Mark chapter number 1, in verse number 6, he says, after John had been put in prison, Jesus came preaching the solution. And he said, repent. Well, repent takes us into salvation. He says, for the kingdom, for the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. So what Jesus brought as hope was first of all himself as the door and secondly the kingdom as the hope for the nations. So I'm here just to remind the world and the globe and everybody that's watching that the hope for the world is the kingdom of God. I'll say that again. The hope for the world today is the kingdom of God. How is this going to happen? This is going to happen when the church begins to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Why? Because the church becomes the body that will instill and propagate the kingdom of God. There has never been a better time for the kingdom of God to advance than the day we are living in. So God then begins to build a body to advance the kingdom of God. You're probably wondering, how, what does that have to do with the troubles you're going through? Let me try to come to your door right now. You see, when God looks at you, he only has two answers for you. First of all, he says, are you born again? Number two, he asks, have you found the kingdom? Why? Because he knows what you need, but he wants to be sure you also know what you need. So what we need in this season is for a better understanding of the kingdom of God and its operations because this is where the answer for the world is. What is the kingdom of God? Romans 14 and 17. He says the kingdom of God is not meat or drink. It's not physical stuff. The kingdom of God, rather, Romans 4, 17, is righteousness, it is peace, and it is joy in the Holy Ghost. If you look at these three things, these are the three things that the world is looking for. The world is looking for right placement. The world is looking for a peace. There are rich people saying, if I can only sleep for one night until morning without the demons of my past waking me up. There are people who just need one thing called joy. That if I can just find joy. Now the hope of these things are found in a place called the kingdom of God. Now these become the realities of the place that we have found. Now of these three, the first called righteousness is found when we find salvation. But the two, which is peace and joy, are realities that we get into after we begin to grow in the understanding of the faith that we have. So I'm here to encourage you that three things are going to happen to you in this season. Number one, you are going to step into a place of the manifestation of the righteousness of God. Number two, you are going to step into the place of what Paul says, peace that surpasses human understanding. So it's not a peace based on the world. This is peace, shalom, the ordering of the kingdom of God for your life. And then number three, you're going to step into a place called joy. Peter calls it joy and unspeakable and full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory because these are the things that the kingdom of God begin to introduce to a man. Let me see if I can run for the few more minutes that I have with you. Now when we talk about righteousness we are saying that every man was created in Christ to be somebody. Oh, hallelujah. So when we find ourselves in salvation, we discover who God made us to be. We discover what God made us to be. 
The trials you're going through will always cause you to second guess your identity. But in this season, the Lord leads you to a place called the righteousness of God where you discover your true identity in Christ. However, the purpose of identity is to usher you into the purposes of the kingdom of God. Now, the purposes of the kingdom of God begin to be manifested as peace and joy. This is what I mean. That Christ in me, the hope of glory, will not just affect me at place of righteousness, but he delivers in my heart a peace that the world can't give and the world can't take away from me. No wonder... When the devil comes at the end of the age, which is not so far from now, he comes as the Antichrist, but watch this now, he comes promising peace. Now everything that the devil does is a counterfeit of what the kingdom already offers. So restlessness in the world today will be met by a lie called the Antichrist who comes as a prince of peace. But we all know, as Isaiah said, that unto us a child is born, chapter number 9 and verse 6, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. He says, and he shall be called wonderful. He shall be called counselor. He shall be called everlasting father. And then he says he shall be called the prince of peace. The prince of peace. So guess what? In your family, you will become the pillar of peace. That while there is a shaking around you, people will always call on you because they recognize that there is a peace in you that that uh, circumstances cannot affect. That peace is coming because peace is the reality of a kingdom that has come. You remember the story of Jesus on the storm. Jesus was sleeping, but the disciples were restless. They looked up to him and said, Carest thou not that we perish? Jesus looked at them and said, How long shall I be with you, O ye of little hope that has not yet become a reality? O ye of little faith, because when Christ is in you, you have the hope of glory. What's the hope of glory? It is righteousness, peace, and joy established in your spirit. Let me say that again. What is hope of glory? It is righteousness, peace, and joy. It is the kingdom of God established on the inside of you. So that when there is a shaking, there is a peace that you can't even define. Now, when we go to joy, it is even better. Peter puts it this way. He says that you might receive joy unspeakable and full of glory. I'll get that for you so I'm not just rushing and you miss the scripture that I'm trying to share. Just give me a few more minutes and, and we'll be done. Then I will pray with you. Hallelujah, somebody. I hope you're picking what the Lord is speaking to us even today. Now, the joy of the Lord also becomes a spiritual reality. First Peter chapter number 1 and verse number 8. But I want you to see that this joy is connected to kingdom and to salvation. Verse number 8, he says, Whom having not seen, you love, and in whom thou now, uh, he says, in whom though now you see him not, yet you believe salvation. And because you believe, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. But look at verse number 9. And you receive the end of your faith. Uh, let's remove the word faith. Let me rewrite that. And now you're receiving the end or the reward of your hope, which becomes a reality. And what is that? The salvation of your souls. The salvation of your souls. So when Jesus comes as the hope of the nations and brings salvation, out of our bellies begins to flow a joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. Christ in me, the hope of glory, is in fact the overflow of joy that I can't even explain to the world. I pray for you in the few minutes I'm having left that the Lord will begin to minister righteousness, minister peace, and minister joy in you because these become the realities of the kingdom of God. The reason I call this kingdom mindedness is because this must be your mind. This is how you must think concerning the days we are living in. That we are living in days where God wants to manifest his glory. So in conclusion, let me now take you to the most important part. 
after a man has received, the, the, has received salvation, after a man has stepped into the kingdom, now the next most important thing that it becomes the hope of glory is understanding that it is in fact the purposes of the kingdom that become the manifestation of glory. If I was you, I would write that one down. It is the purposes of God in a man that become the manifestation of that hope of glory. You see, hope that never manifests is void. Hope that never comes to fruition is void. Why would I keep waiting for something that will never come to pass? That takes us to the book of Romans chapter number 8. Because this is how we then understand why the hope of glory is in fact the manifestation of the sons of God. I've just said something that I hope you are able to appreciate. Let me say that again. I said the hope of glory, number one, is the manifestation of salvation. It is the understanding of the kingdom. But now this kingdom is coming as the manifestation of the sons of God. Romans 8 and 18. And then... Uh, we see how to close this in Jesus' mighty name. Verse 18 says, For I reckon, watch this now, <laughs> that the sufferings of this present time, coronavirus, the pandemic, poverty, sickness, whatever it is, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy, hallelujah, to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. If I was you, I would put my name right there. Let's try that with your name in there. Instead of in us, I want you to put your name. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in Joshua. So nothing that Joshua goes through can be compared to the glory that shall be revealed through Joshua. So understand that these are not the seasons for us to cry. These are in fact the seasons for us to prepare ourselves for the greatest revelation of the glory of God on the earth. I would get an amen if I was you. So he says, how do we know this? Verse 19. Let's conclude this. Verse 19. He says, for the honest expectation of the creature. You understand now? <laughs> is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, it is the creature that is in pain. But the creature understands that this pain is giving birth to sons of God. So he says, creature is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Verse 20, he says, for the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who was subjected. Look, look at this. Look at that, verse 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected, are you there? The same in hope. Mm. So the creature is waiting in manifestation for something that has already been prepared. So their waiting is not in vain. You didn't pick it. The people you are about to bless are waiting for something. <laughs> and what they are waiting for is, what they are waiting for is something that has been set up by God who allowed them to wait. Mm. So whatever they are waiting for is being built up within the same circumstances that they are worrying about. So in the same shaking, some men are being built and others are being made to wait for what is being built. I thought I'm talking to somebody here. Now, this is what is called the hope of his calling. So when God calls you, he calls you to men he has made to wait. Jesus, help us here today. So in this season, when men who are waiting meet the men who are being revealed, then the hope of glory is made manifest. I'm not here just because I want to be here. I'm here because the troubles have been allowed and a, a stage has been set for the manifestation of glory for men who are waiting. And today I decree and I declare, if you don't hear anything else, please hear this. May the Lord lead you into the hope of his calling. May he take you to the place where you manifest the hope of glory. So he has said that the creature is in subject to vanity, but it is subjected in hope so that we who carry the hope of glory will take this hope to the men that are waiting.
take this hope to India. Pray with me now. We will talk, take this hope to South Korea, to North Korea, to Afghanistan that is in trouble right now. So now watch this now. Christ in me, the hope of glory, now ceases to be just the gift of salvation. It ceases just to be a kingdom that has come. It now becomes sons that are being revealed. So I pray that this hope radio, diaspora hope radio, I love that word diaspora because it's talking about the entire world. I hope that this radio and this TV will become an avenue through which the sons of God will be built into sent men of the kingdom that will then begin to take hope to their families, hope to their nations, hope to their countries. Listen, for as long as the kingdom is here, hope is still alive. And hope, Romans chapter number 5 and verse number 5 says, hope maketh not ashamed. I wish I could read that for you as I close this out. Hope maketh not ashamed. Pastor, just give me a minute and I will pray for the people here. Romans 5 verse 1, he says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein, look at this, we stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And he says, and not only so, but we also hope in tribulation, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience worketh experience, but experience worketh hope. And then he says, and hope maketh not ashamed. I pray for you. You will not stand ashamed in the middle of men because you will be the carrier of hope for these men. Hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Ephesians chapter number 1 and verse number 18 is really the last verse. He says, Ephesians 1, 18, he says unto us that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you may know the first thing you see when you get salvation. The first thing that enters when you step into the kingdom of God, Ephesians 1.18, he says when your eyes are enlightened, guess what happens? He says that you may know what is the hope of his calling, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Today, I pray that the Lord will lead you into this place of manifestation. I thank you for taking time to listen to us today. And I'm praying that the Lord will bless us all today. My word of prayer is Romans 15 and verse number 13. This is the word of prayer I want to decree over you. And then I'll hand back to my brother, Pastor Ben, to just close us out. But this is my prayer for you. I pray that hope will arise in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that the discovery of salvation will lead you to the discovery of the kingdom. But more than anything else, it will lead you to the discovery of the kingdom of God's purposes. That the Lord will lead you to a place where you start to walk in your purposes. If we had time, I would just push those purposes for you to understand that your glory is in your purposes. The Lord has allowed today to happen the calamities to happen, the shaking to happen, so that the men who carry glory, the sons of God, whose season it is to manifest, will begin to manifest. In this season of great shaking, healers are coming out. Preachers are being born. The fivefold ministry is being born. I'm telling you, men and women of God are being raised in this season. And if you're asking, what do I do in this season? Well, connect to the purposes of the kingdom of God for your life. Verse number 13 of Romans 15. This is the prayer the Lord asked me to pray over you. Now, I pray over you. Thank you, Jesus. May the God of hope, my Lord Jesus, may now the God of hope fill you <laughs> with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power 
of the Holy Ghost. Let me pray that again. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able to admonish one another. I pray these things over you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My name is Apostle Joshua. We minister here at the Kingdom Tabernacle. And you can get our teachings on our YouTube channel. All you need to do is type Apostle Joshua Ham Kurunje and look out for our channel called The Kingdom Tabernacle. And I believe that it shall be a blessing to you. Pastor Ben, I'm honored. I'm really honored that you considered me to come and speak to the world today. And I pray for you, your family, and the entire station that God will continue to use you to advance the kingdom of God. God bless you and thank you so much. The kingdom of God does not benefit you physically until you have discovered it spiritually. In fact, your level of discovery in the spirit determines your fruit in the physical. So Jesus says that the first mystery that people didn't understand was the mystery of the coming kingdom. They kept waiting for a kingdom that had already come. When Jesus came, he's saying the time is fulfilled come on now and the kingdom of god is at hand so repent and believe the gospel